Hi, this is Rob Breiman, Senior Partner Coach in Analytics. And we're going to be doing a number of public service announcements for small business owners and sharing them through LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. Um, and I think I'll do one a day or one every other day. But there's a number of shifts that are going on in uh, the market today that I think concern small business owners. And I think I want to start the first one out today talking about the PPP or 7A loans as a portion of the CARES Act. Um, so we have been having conversations with our clients across the country about the PPP, um, which is really the pay more, payroll protection program. And I think what we're seeing is that accountants and bankers are reaching out to their respective clients pretty aggressively and really having everybody sign up for the PPP. So you've had a massive influx of businesses applying for the PPP. And, you know, what's happening is that people are applying for relief specific to what I call the flavor of the day, i.e. the PPP or payroll protection, and not considering everything that's within this piece of legislation. And, you know, it's not a one size fits all. I think the first consideration that everybody needs to take is A, the condition of their business, where their current cash flow is, how much backlog of work they have, and how do they protect their labor force. So the PPP was designed for the labor force, and there are some governances to the June 30 hard date, which allows you to retain some employees and still be able to pay payroll, but it is also providing for the fact that 25% of the overall loan value can be used for things like rent, utilities, interest, things that are direct overhead costs to the business. But you gotta be really careful that there are guidance in the 25%. So the reason why I'm calling it a loan and not a grant is most every one of our clients that we're talking to believe that 100% is going to be turned into a grant at the end of that June 30 day. So a couple of cautionary tales. As an operating consulting group, we would recommend good record keeping regardless of whether you're not taking out an indebtedure. But in this particular case, there are specific governances that are only going to allow you to take so much of what you are borrowing and turning into a grant. You know, we have some concerns about business owners being able to scale their company appropriately, protect cash flow and then be able to scale up appropriately as revenue turns back on. So if you're not really careful with that equation, what you end up with is a larger percentage of the debt that you're taking out now not being turned into a grant and it becomes a loan to the company. Our concern to our clients are that if we're not careful about how much actually turns into a grant and you are left with an indebtedure, most small businesses operate. If you have a healthy debt level with normal moderate profit levels, you are just prior to COVID-19, we're just at about a position where you were able to service current debt, current obligations, and still have a little bit of money left over. And our concern, obviously, is that if you are not able to take advantage of 100% of the grant level, that then that debt accelerated over two-year period instead of 10-year period is going to put some cash burden on your company. So there's number one, and I really want to make sure everybody is taking consideration as they're applying for these loans are are you careful enough in your record keeping, and are you going to be able to take advantage? of the grant portion and not turn something into an accelerated cash flow obligation that you're going to have after June 30. So you get uh, basically a vacation for the six months and then the next following 18 months, you have got to be able to retire the debt or restructure that debt at the end of that two year period. So managing your balance sheet, managing your cash flow, managing the financial uh, considerations in your business become even more important. Um, if I were to say that the PPP is a good solution, because I believe it is, although there are a number of things in the legislation that if you take the PPP, you would be precluded from being able to take advantage of. 
most especially things like the SSI holiday and the employee retention portion of the legislation, which has some provisions in there that in some cases are going to be more beneficial than a PPP loan to begin with. You also have things like an EIDL loan, which is an emergency disaster relief program through the SBA. Remember that the EIDL requires you to have security where the PPP does not. So this is, again, not a one size fits all solution. And I think if you sit down with your professional advisors and really work through how you can best participate in a program that is best suited for you, please take the time before you sign the final documents that you are well prepared to both govern the PPP loan within your business and that you have the right solution for your company. If for any reason you have questions or considerations, please don't hesitate to look us up on www.cogenanalytics.com and you know, submit the form. We have professional advisors every single day talking through these circumstances with the small business owners across the country. We just wanna make sure that people are being careful and that people understand the implications of the legislation and that you are absolutely doing the best thing on behalf of you and your family. Thank you for your time today. And I will continue to do these over the course of the next couple of weeks. Please keep your family safe.